to Sydney Olympics. Wow. Uh, huh. Wow. Uh, it, you know, it's, uh, what is it, nine years on. And it, it's still painful to talk about it just because. I don't want to open the whole room. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's okay, I guess. Uh, the guys in that crew were and remain uh, the best friends I will ever have. You say that you were closer to the 97, 99 guys than you are perhaps the 2004 guys. That is true. That is true. And I, I think we went so went through so much in that, you know, particularly the 98, 99 crew. And then it, it was just really a, uh, it, it was a tactical error. Um, you know, I mean, you could argue whether it was strategic or tactical, but the coach wanted to try and get medals in the four and the eight, and we thought we had some strong upcoming talent that we could backfill, and just through some injuries and some unexpected things, and also the Brits really, you know, I, I've got to credit the Brits uh, for we what won they the gold did. That year. They did win the gold, and I think that what they did was they recognized that if you want to win the gold, you have to come with your absolute very best. Your and best crew, your best performance. Everything. Your best crew, your best training, your best just emotional prep. And they they came with everything, and we were we were not there. And so it, it's tough. I mean, a few guys that I'm I'm racing with here at Henley were were in that crew and, and on that team. And you know, one of them uh, said to me, I think it's not something that people might not understand. absolutely true. But I think that someone, you know, maybe who's never been to the Olympics would say, wow, man, that would be really great to go and experience that. Uh, and regardless of the result. But when you when you set your expectations on winning, it totally changes how you, you look at the result. And that, that's how it came out. So, so the Olympics. Now we're trying to move on. Yeah. To Athens. What's that process there? Was it a regrouping, a regrouping of the guys? Well, it was an emotional process. You know, I, I think that uh, the first thing I did was take a year out and uh, just do something completely different. So I, I was uh, I was working working a lot of the time uh, and just staying away from it. And it was, honestly, uh, it was the last thing that I thought about before I fell asleep and the first thing I thought about when I woke up in the morning, just that... that uh, underperformance in Sydney and it wasn't about embarrassment it wasn't about humiliation it's simply about not achieving what you're capable of and and that was what really that's what really burned and it was a, it was a difficult time uh, from that perspective but I just I immersed myself in work and in 2002 uh, the coach coach Tatey called me in about June and said if you can start coming to practice, you may have a chance to make the eight this year. And I turned and talked to my boss, and I said, I think this is something that I have to do. Uh, so we went to the CEO of our company, and at the time I was working for a company that was half owned by Dow Jones and half owned by Reuters. And she said, absolutely, we, we understand. You know, go with our compliments. Uh, and we'll, 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 we'll work out the schedule. Uh, and I, I, I went back in. And that year, in 2002, we uh, we got a bronze medal at the World Championships. It was maybe a bit of an underperformance, but I using the Canadians. And yeah, the and, and the Germans. Germans. Yeah, it, exactly. But in uh, in 2002, when we lost, the uh, the funny part about that was, I, I snuck off right before the race, and I was in the bushes. I was actually crying. Uh, <laughs> I, I was so happy to be back in the sport because of something that I I love so much. And uh, then when we got a bronze medal. You know, many of the guys in the crew were disappointed, and I, I was elated. I said, "Man, we got a medal! This is this is great! You know, this is fantastic! I'm I'm actually really really happy about this." Yeah. Uh, and I also knew that the pressure of winning those intermediate years can cause all kinds of problems. So I was I was very happy with the bronze medal in 2002, and then uh, 2003 was an odd year. You know, we came to race at Henley, and we just got absolutely destroyed by the Canadians. I think they beat us. You know, they beat us by easily. Right? Yeah. Um, and we went back, and, and Mike sort of declared martial law. He said, this is it. The world championships are in five weeks or whatever they are, and we are going to button down. Right. And so I think, uh, you know, the, the regime was so intense. My girlfriend dumped me. 
uh, you know, it was all kinds of sacrifices uh, were made. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And and but at the same time, it was uh, it was clear choice of priorities, I, I guess, at the time. And and we came back, and that crew, uh, I think that crew got that silver medal purely on grit. Those guys wanted it more than the crews that finished behind us. And uh, and that was, you know, that was it. It was just simply guts that we weren't extraordinarily talented. Uh, we were physiologically pretty strong. Technically, we were okay. And psychologically, that crew was just pinned. You know, they just wanted it really, really bad. And that race was a long race. It was, you know, horrid headwind. I think the you know the Canadians won in about six minutes, and we were like maybe six oh one. Uh, but we gave it everything we had, and hey, if that race had gone another hundred meters, who knows? Maybe if we raced here, we would have beaten them. Yeah. So you're in Athens. Yeah. The biggest race, perhaps, of your career. Yeah, absolutely. A chance to redo the wrongs of 2000. Yeah. 45 minutes to go. It's you, Mike Tetty, uh, Ted Nash, and the guys. When someone says to Mike Tetty, are you nervous? And he says... <laughs> that was great. So... You, what you got to understand about Mike is that Mike is probably the most stone-faced coach in the history of coaching. Maybe, maybe Jurgen Grobler might be more stone-faced than Mike. Oh, but, Britain, yeah. but yeah, those, those two guys are, are pretty, pretty hard men. And uh, somebody said, hey, Mike, are you nervous? And Mike just puts his head in his hands and kind of comes up and goes, yes, I am absolutely freaking out. And then he kind of picked his head up and smiled. And we all knew that it was irrational just because we we knew that we were good. I mean, we'd broken the world record in the heat substantially. You know, we'd broken it by a wide margin. Uh, we'd it still hasn't been broken, right? It still hasn't been broken. We'd beaten a Canadian crew in the heat that was extraordinarily fast, and we just, we had a great performance in the heat. It was very controlled. We did what we needed to do, even in a moment, you know, where we needed to do something extraordinary. We just, we did it, it was a matter of fact. I mean, that, that crew could almost do tricks. It's like, you know, yeah. what, do you, what do you want to do? Okay, yeah, we could do that. Uh, and so, but back to that, someone said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a wreck. What and about we had, you? Were you yeah. nervous? Or? No, no. Because you had confidence in your preparation? It, it's a very, uh, it became a very sort of instinctual thing uh, for me, you know, ha having been at it for so many seasons that just sometimes I wasn't nervous. And, you know, I, I never had the self-awareness to notice that I wasn't nervous, but... You know, everybody else did. So all the parents would say, "Oh, Pete's not nervous. They must. They they're going to do well." And uh, no, I, I was feeling good. I mean, I, I felt good from the the moment that I woke up that morning. I remember I woke up about a half an hour before my alarm went off, and I just I just felt good. So describe the race uh, for those who might not have seen it. Mm -hmm. um, to give a brief overview, you jump out to a strong lead, mm -hmm. and 500 uh, meters into the race, a quarter of the way through, you're leading, and then pick it up there. For well, you know, even before that, we weren't expecting to have the lead, so we thought... That wasn't um, part of the strategy. No, it wasn't, it wasn't, well, I guess it wasn't part of the expectations, you know. Right. Strategy, you, you can't build your strategy around what you think everybody else is going to do, right? You build your strategy around you how you control. think you can get down the course as fast as you can. Yeah. So, you know, on our, on our left side, on the port side, we had, uh, we had Germany on the outside, Canada and Australia. And then on our, our right side, we had uh, the Australians and the French. And, you know, we didn't really think that the French would be a factor, but we didn't know about anybody else. We figured that there might be, you know, some trouble. Uh, so we were just going to go and then really try to make the second and third 500s our, our domain and really get the lead there. And we figured that, hey, if we can get the lead with about 750 meters to go, that we can close, this thing. We can close it out. Yeah, we had some really good sprinters in the crew.